Chronicles. We've got an interesting video for you today on the subject of sharpening knives. I think this is a subject that uh, is a question mark in a lot of people's minds. You know, you get yourself a nice knife and, you know, it's got maybe a sharp edge on it to begin with and it gets dull. It's, maybe it's an expensive knife, especially when it's uh, a hunting knife. Uh, you can spend quite a bit of money in the, these things and it's almost a little daunting to go about sharpening it. You don't want to wreck or damage this this beautiful knife you have. As I'll mention later on, this is one of those kind of knives. Maybe you don't have a lot of experience in sharpening knives, so what are you going to do? There is a method of sharpening your knife in a very reliable fashion, put a high quality edge on it, and you can do it even as a rank amateur. So what I'd like to do in this video is I'd like to introduce you to a system that I've been using for, oh shoot, I think over 30 years anyways, maybe longer. And it's called the Lansky sharpening system. It's still around, it's still very popular. And I think if you take a look at how it's done, you might agree with me that this is a good way to go. So if you have some questions about sharpening a knife, let's get into this and learn a few things. To start with, we're gonna take a look at this Lansky kit. And uh, I'm gonna attempt to sharpen this nice uh, knife of my father's. It was handed down to me. This is a Puma White Hunter. And this is this knife has been through many, many years of, of good use. And uh, I have this stand here that came with the Lansky sharpening system uh, a long time ago. So this, this kit might has changed, I think, from in recent years to a different stand and things like that. But mostly the system is is the same. So with the Lansky kit, what you get is you get a nice box that contains everything you need in it. You can see there that the, now this isn't the original bottle, but this is a little bottle of oil. And, and here you have your rods that go into the various uh, grades of sharpening stone that you get with the kit. And here you get a little clamp that goes onto this mount that I've secured to my table with a couple of C-clamps. You don't really have to do this, you can even hold it just by hand and work it, but it is quite nice to have it on, on a little pedestal like that. And I'll show you how that's done. Uh, the oil you can use to uh, put on the, on the whetstone. You can use spit too if you really wanted to, but uh, oil is nice and I'll get into some of that stuff later. But uh, the first thing we'll do is uh, we'll take a look at the kit and how we set it up. I'll take this, this knife out. So this is quite a large knife. Uh, this one here is uh, quite a uh, round bend to it. And it has some teeth on it there for doing a little bit of cutting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen the knife from this portion on. I'm not going to sharpen these little teeth because I don't want to wear them down. I think my dad did do that in the past sometimes, but you, know, you really should start right around here. Just You just leave those little teeth alone. That's my preference anyways. So, uh, to take this kit, and the first thing you got to do is you got to get it into this, into this clamp. You can see with this, the kit I have anyways, I even have an extra screw that comes with it. Uh, if you need to get a, a deeper bite on, uh, for like some, a thicker blade, you can use this screw in it. Uh, it gives you an extra screw for, for these little pieces here. Uh, and you take your, your kit and you, your clamps, and I'm going to position it about halfway onto the bend of the knife blade. And what I want to do when I when I tighten it, I'm going to do it around this way here. See I've what I want is uh, a fairly even fit on the blade. Let's see if we can do this uh, a little better. See so I'm going to get it about here halfway through the cut. And once 
I have that, then I'll just tighten this, this screw here and get a good bite on that blade. It doesn't have to be super, super tight, but you can see as uh, the way I have it set here, that's actually a pretty good grab on the blade. If you're dealing with a very small blade, you might have to have this all the way to the end because you want to have about 5 eighths of an inch from the edge of your jaws to the edge of the blade. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's going to vary as you go along anyways, but one about 5 eighths of an inch is, is good. Uh, one of the limitations is that when you set your stones in there, you got your stone has to be able to miss this edge of the, of the clamp, of course, so that's a limiting factor right there. So this is set up pretty good, and what we'll do next is just take this clamp and place it on here. What I'll be able to do is uh, sharpen this knife on this side, and then I can flip it over, and I can sharpen it on this side here. So it's uh, nice and easy to work on. Now the key to this system is how these stones are set up because if you want to get a good edge on a knife blade one of the important things is to have a consistent angle and that's what these stones will do for you here's the uh, the rough stone it's a little bit oily still from the last time and you can take this rod you can place it in there you have to back that off a little bit Put that through there, and you want it about, about even on there. Even with the, oh, well you can make you can make it. You want to have enough clearance so that you can turn that little nut there and tighten it down. And then what you do with this system is you do that with start with a coarse stone as a rule if you need to do uh, some pretty heavy sharpening on the blade and then you can go with uh, medium stone and it says right on the on the stones what what grade they are this says uh, L6 280 medium stone on it and then you go down to your fine stone which is this one here this is really fine so we'll start off with this with this coarse stone here first and I don't have to do a whole lot of shaping on this blade but I'm going to do this uh, anyways the rationale behind this system is that you place these stones in the guides like that you can see here that it has a, a 30 and a 25 and a 20 and it looks like a 17 slot here so depending on which slot you put the stone through it's going to determine what angle you put on the blade now 30 is more for if you're doing axes or things that you're really pounding pounding uh, the edge of the blade hard with so you need a very strong edge it's not going to be as great for cutting, but it'll be a blade that holds up a long time. 25 is the, is the angle that you would use. You can see that from the angle here. That's the angle you would use for, for doing a hunting type uh, a blade. For a hunting knife, something that's used for hard work. Uh, blade, an edge that you want to stay on there for quite a while. Now, if you were doing butcher knives, you would want to go with a 20. It's a thin blade. It's something that you can sharpen lots. It'll, it'll get dull quicker, but uh, you just take uh, a steel to it, and you can set up the blade uh, intermittently, not always having to go back to these, these stones and stuff like that. And if you want to go for a razor scalpel type edge, then you go with a 17. That's a very severe angle there. So, this being a hunting knife, 
we're going to go with the 25 setting for it. I think that stands for angle, degrees angle. And we're going to sharpen the knife like that. So the way we're going to, we're going to start on this is to take this little bit of oil here. And I'm going to put a little bit of oil on the stone. Say, well, why do you need oil on there? Good question. The reason you want to have some oil on your stone or some sort of liquid, some medium you want on there to carry away the uh, steel filings as you file your blade. And this is going to generate the most filings when it comes to the rough stone. So you put a little bit of oil on there and then you do some, some grinding on it, uh, some, some shaping on it, and the uh, pieces of metal, fine pieces of metal will float along in that liquid and, and instead of getting ground into the stone. So it gives you a better ability to cut. Okay, let's take this. I'm going gonna, gonna to start from, from this part here on the blade. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sharpen this blade, starting at this end here. And I have my 25 degree angle selected, and I'm going to cut, do all my cutting like this, pushing forward, not, not dragging back, but all the cutting is done on there. You see how that's done? Now, depending on how dull your knife was to start with, you may have to do this quite a bit to get a, a new edge on it. But you can see as I'm doing this, I'm keeping a constant angle on the blade. And that's very important for getting a sharp edge. And it's a real advantage of the Lansky system. So I'm going to do this a few times on this blade. This blade is not very dull, and actually I can feel it get, get sharper, even by the way that the stone drags. And uh, when I'm done doing the one side, all I do is I just take, take it off, and I flip the system over, and I can proceed to do the other side, making sure that I select that proper angle again and in my case I'm starting ahead of the little teeth portion on the blade and I'll start back again so I'm kind of sweeping forward but I'm always doing the cutting on the up high, uphill side I push down as I drag it ahead Try to keep it even as I go along. Now, as I'm doing this, if you're doing quite a bit of, of grinding on the blade like this, you may need to take your a cloth and wipe the stone, get some of those filings off of there. So you can see if I wipe that off. I'm not generating too many filings there. So I'm finished with this stone now, and we'll tighten, put the next stone in there, put it in so that I can still turn, turn this little thumb screw here, and I'll take a bit of this oil, let's maybe I'll start this way here, and we're going to do some of the medium stone cutting. Again, making sure that I select, I'm going to start over from where I started before. <clears throat> and starting at that part just ahead of the teeth. And I start cutting, grinding again. medium stone is not going to take off as much metal as that big, as the coarse stone did. But it is taking off metal, just to a lesser extent. 
Now, if you if you're sharpening a knife that is not very dull, you just want to touch up the blade. I recommend that you don't use coarse stone at all, because you're just going to be burning up steel unnecessarily. But the the coarse stone is more for if you're setting up the whole whole blade. People have trouble sharpening as they get to the point of the blade, but this Lansky system really does it nicely. It's nice having it on the stand here because the stand will rotate if I needed to. But as I said before, you can do it without the stand. I've most often actually done it just holding this little clip portion in my hand because uh, the rod going through the guide there is going to keep it at a constant angle anyways. So now I've, I'm finished up with, with my medium stone. Get an idea of how much came off of there. Not a whole lot. We'll go to our next, next stone here. Okay, we'll get this guy in there. Tighten it so it's about up there. This stone is very fine. It's so smooth. Like it's not going to be taken off much for metal. It's just going to be polishing the blade. So I'll put a little bit of oil on there as a medium to carry away the steel filings. Making sure again that I always select that right indicator in here. Don't make that mistake that you accidentally select the wrong notch and you start grinding at 20 degrees after you've been setting the edge to 25 degrees. So pay attention to that. Now here is where we, we really uh, get the smooth edge on this knife. This is the finishing touch. You know, if you uh, start set the edges on all your knives in the house, this doesn't apply just to hunting knives, of course. Just to the uh, cutlery in your house, especially the butchering knives. Once you get the edge set on good with the coarse stone, you don't have to. Uh, take very long to sharpen all the knives in the house. This can be done pretty quick. I'm going to take this one here. But as a rule, you want to make around uh, six or seven or eight passes on your blade. For the purposes of this video, I'm not doing quite as thorough a job. is a consistent angle being put on this edge being put on this this nice piece of steel and this these puma knives are very uh, expensive knives it's not something that you want to wreck treat a knife good and it'll last you a lifetime these ones here are especially well made now when I use a when you use a hunting knife, you sometimes you gotta skin a whole moose or something like that. That's why you want a twenty-five degree uh, angle on your blade. I could make it down to a butcher, a twenty degree butcher, butchering knife type of angle, but then the blade would have to be sharpened all the time and uh, that's not that's more for butchering like cutting through meat and stuff like that. But when you're cutting through hide and all kinds of stuff. That's when you want a, a working edge of uh, 25 degrees. So now that we got the knife sharpened, let's take a look at what we got here. Wipe this thing down a bit. As you can see, this knife has got a few scratches on it. It's been used a lot in the past. 
but uh, I'm not sure how well you can see that edge. So if you want to do your knives in a very simple way, you don't have to be an expert uh, knife sharpener to take care of your knives and put a good edge on them. Uh, the, uh, you know, this, this will, will do the trick. It's good to test the knife on a piece of paper. If you wanted to really go to town, you could get a leather strop with a little bit of uh, compound on it, and uh, like the old barbers used to do. Uh, and even make this edge uh, finer because there's always going to be a few little tiny pieces of metal still hanging on there but this fine stone has really done a, a good enough job in my opinion you can have a very nice sharp knife and uh, the system the Lansky system has been around for many years it's simple to use not cost a few bucks I think some of the newer ones um, have a, a diamond type of grit, a diamond instead of a diamond grit instead of uh, the traditional whetstones. So with those, you wouldn't even be using uh, oil or some medium on it to carry away the pieces. But you would want to uh, wash the stones off once in a while if you get one of those diamond grits. Have a little uh, bit of soapy water and just dip the when the stone starts to slide too easily as you're grinding, that's be an indication that the, the the pores in the in the diamond grit are getting filled with iron filing, so that it's not cutting very well anymore. So then you want to clean off your stone and uh, get it so it starts to cut again. Uh, same basic principle probably applies to wet stones, as I understand it too. You know, if the clean that oil off and apply some new oil if you're doing a lot of heavy uh, cutting with that stone and uh, uh, get those pieces of uh, steel that are floating around off the stone but aside from that there's not a whole lot that can go wrong with this just be careful you don't cut yourself now we finished sharpening up this blade using the Lansky system we have a good blade and uh, as I mentioned before, I set a 25 degree angle on this blade to give it a working edge. And I mentioned that you know you want that that type of an edge that lasts long when you're doing stuff like skinning an animal. But the edge doesn't last forever. And I should mention that when it comes to working with a knife, especially when you're doing heavy cutting like through hide and things like that that may contain dirt and you're occasionally hitting bones, things like that. All this stuff will dull even the best blade. The harder the steel you have, the better, and the longer that edge will last. But you should have some sort of a steel with you to sharpen and set up your blade again. Now, this is a nice, long, big piece of uh, sharpening steel that I use around the house quite a bit, or when we're butchering up animals. Uh, when I'm when we're hunting, I'll just pack along always a little steel in my pouch. And this is perfectly uh, capable of, of doing the job itself too. So just uh, loosen it a bit. And you get your, your steel like that. And in case some of you aren't familiar with this, after your knife has been sharpened and you're working with it for a bit, that very fine edge on it will sort of curl over, I think if you look at it microscopically, and that, that makes it dull because it's now it, instead of being like this, it's over like that and now it's cutting with a round edge and that's why it feels like your knife is getting dull. So how to fix that with, you don't have to go right back to your sharpening stones to fix that. You just take a steel and using the same angle that you were doing the sharpening with, 25 degrees in this case, you're just going to guess looking at it. It doesn't have to be perfect, but uh, you just take the steel and you 
stroke it the whole length like that a few times. And you'd be surprised. You do this a few times as you're skinning an animal or whatever heavy cutting you're doing. And your blade is going to be much sharper just in no time, just after a few strokes. You see uh, butchers doing this all the time. They go, you know, don't worry about that stuff. That, these guys have been doing it for years. You don't have to do it fast. Just, just be careful. Be careful you don't cut yourself. Uh, the same thing applies when you're butchering animals. Uh, if you do that yourself, you know, it's nice to have uh, one of these large uh, steels. And I'm just stroke, stroking the uh, blade, setting it up so that that curl is now, that I had on the, on the, on the edge of the knife is now it's stood up again. So once you do that, once you get your knife sharp, always bring along a steel of some sort, something compact, of course, if you're hunting. Always have that with you. Set up your blade frequently, because uh, a, a dull blade is more dangerous than a sharp blade. I think that covers pretty well everything that I want to talk about on sharpening knives. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you visited this channel for the first time, I encourage you to click the subscribe button for it. And even the bell so you get notifications when new videos come out. I've been working on this channel for a few years. I think it's getting better and better and I try to get a video out every week or two. So I look forward to new content and I thank you for watching and God bless.